welcome to the Sugar Lee Shed for an episode on Plastic Age. This is just a wee short episode and it's just going to focus in on the process that I'm going about, well, about to go through of measuring the journals and the oil clearances in the crankcase of the GS500 engine I'm rebuilding using this stuff. It's called Plastic Age. Let me see that. And essentially, it is a very, very easy way of measuring how much oil is going to be between the journals of a crankshaft, and balancer shaft, etc. and the shell bearings in the engine. So without further ado, let's go on with it. So as I understand it, and I have never done this before, so it's a learning process, um, Plastic gauge is essentially very thin strips of a sort of blue tack kind of material, plastic kind of material, and then you tear off a piece and you place it on the journal you want to measure. You fit it into the crankcase so the plastic um, is sitting on top of it here. And when you put the other half of the crankcase on and torque up all the bolts to the correct spec, the plastic gauge gets squished. And when it gets squished, it basically squishes to the, the same size as what oil would be in here if, if the engine was running. Um, when you disassemble it, you measure how squished the plastic gauge got against the gauges printed on the envelope. And it essentially tells you what your oil clearances are. Um, it's quite simple. A solution to what otherwise is a relatively complicated procedure. Um, you'd need to measure with a micrometer um, or vernier calipers. Um, you'd need to measure the diameter between that and the upper shell bearing and then the diameter of your journal and subtract the two and then that would give you your oil clearance. However, there's a large amount of error that could be in those measurements if you're not very good at it or you don't do it very precisely or your calipers aren't um, properly calibrated etc. So this is a simple solution to it. Um, I'm sure there are people out there who like to do it proper way with proper vernier calipers and that's fine but for my purpose this I think is going to be the winner today. As the Haynes describes it, a very thin piece of plastic gauge on each journal Torque it up, gets squished, and you measure how squished it is against the gauge on the envelope. So the Haynes manual says that you should measure the balancer shaft and the crankshaft at the same time and simultaneously uh, to obtain your, your clearances. First of all, the job is to take out each of these bearing shells and give them a good clean. Make sure there's no residue or any little bits of grit that could affect the reading. surfaces are clean. I've just laid the balancer shaft in place and now in goes the crankshaft. just want to line up the dots. There's a dot on the balancer shaft and a dot on the crankshaft. In she goes, seems to spin nicely. So, with these in place, the next step is to lay some plastic gauge on the journals, put the top half of the crankcase on, tighten all the bolts up to torque spec, and then take them all off again and check the plastic gauge. So as you can see, little strips of green plastic gauge on the journals so 
also now there to be tightened in sequence uh, a little bit at a time until they have reached their torque using this. I just bought this um, typical shed builder. I've never owned a torque wrench before, <laughs> um, shamefully enough. My torque wrench has been my arm and going, that's just about right and, and that's too far. Um, so to an effort to avoid that, I bought this. Uh, I got a bigger one as well for doing up um, the head bolts as well. Uh, but this one ranges from 10 to 80 newton meters, which is a pretty good range for most most torque applications, to be honest. Um, so that's my next job is to go through these and get them up to torque. The eight mils are going to 20 newton meters, and the six mils are going to 10 newton meters. Half of that. Do you see that click? That means it's up to torque. Very easy to miss that click. every bolt up to torque spec. Next job is just to undo them all again in sequence and remove it and see what our clearance is like. Just a note, a word to the wise, um, you should never use a torque wrench to untorque bolts, to undo bolts. Uh, the reason is this is a precision tool and if you use it in the opposite direction um, there's a chance that you will basically decalibrate it and you'll damage the mechanism inside it and therefore it won't be accurate anymore and it's as good as useless for measuring torque. Um, so always make sure that you tighten with it and you do not loosen. So if you look here, you'll see that the plastic gauge has been squished into the bearing shell by the journal. Um, now the job is to measure how wide that squished bit is and then compare it to the specs in the Haynes manual. So if you look at this bearing shell, you can see that the plastic gauge has been squished to roughly somewhere between 0.051 and 0.038 on the scale. Um, so that's pretty much bang on in spec, somewhere around about 0.04, so I'm happy with that. The service limit on this is 0.08, so if the squished part was narrower than that 0.076 mark, then I'd need to switch the bearing out for a newer one. So here's a wee note of interest, we've got this bearing here, and that's been squished as you can see. When I hold it up to here, it's a little bit narrower than that 0.051. It's closer to the 0.076. It may even be ever so slightly more narrow than that. And the service limit on these is 0.08. So I'm in the bottom end of this engine. It's a lot of effort to replace these if you don't do it now. Um, so I'm gonna need to make a decision to replace this it's pretty much at its service limit. So Ewan, you need a new bearing. How do you decide what size you need? Well, I'll tell you. Stamped on the outside of the crankcase, it's upside down, get you dizzy, are the sizes of the um, housing. So they're coded. So they're A, 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 A and B. And then, stamped on the web of the crankshaft, there's another code here, we've got B, B, B and B. So that means that the journals on the crankshaft are all size B, and the housings that they sit in are all size A. So what does that mean? Refer to Trusty Haynes Manual. So my crankshaft journal size was B, my crank case housing code was A, so the bearing I have in there is a code black. Simples! I need to replace it with a brand new code black bearing.
I don't know if that was the short episode that I was expecting. I guess I'll find out when I edit it. But uh, hopefully that gave you a wee rundown of how to measure the, the oil clearances um, for your big end bearings. Um, as I said there, I think I might need to have a play about and possibly buy a new bearing shell um, for my crankshaft journal. Uh, anyway, next time I'll hopefully be getting the bottom end of this engine reassembled and the crankcase is on for good. Um, I just need to figure out what parts I need before I can do that. Uh, I've got a bunch of seals and stuff to go on my drive shaft and uh, my input shaft and that kind of thing. Um, so once I get everything I need, I shall be reassembling this bottom half of the engine and then I won't be touching it again. <laughs> It'll be locked up tight, Pandora's box, the lock will be back on it. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this, give me a like and leave a wee comment. Um, maybe this has inspired you to go and delve into the bottom half of your engine or maybe it's scared you shitless and you won't touch it and uh, I don't blame you. Um, more importantly, make sure you subscribe to the Shuley Shed Motors channel and I'll see you in the next episode and hopefully I will be reassembling the bottom half of this engine. Thanks and goodbye. The plastic gauge has been squished on the journals.